I, I don't care if you've been born in Africa or not. Mm. Like you're not going to adapt to that entire entire heritage, mm. you know. Mm. And he can easily switch back to being white mm. if it benefits him. Mm. But as a black mm. person, Mm-hmm. Your oil is going to be yeah, black. Yeah, it's a great point. Despite where you are. It's a great point. You know? People have the right to claim where their familial bloodline, where their heritage mm-hmm. comes from mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. And I think whatever you attach after that by way of nationality or citizenship is secondary and very much unimportant to me. There's a bigger rhetorical question. is what defines an African? The <laughs> things that we do as diasporans do not qualify Mm-hmm. As African behavior. Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Johnny Tamaya and this is the Repat Podcast. Yes, people. Maintain DJ and producer living here in Kampala now for five years. What's mm-hmm. up? It's your boy, Master Gabs, proudly Ugandan, American-born, uh, grew up in the D.C. area, been back in UG for 12 years now. Okay. So we set tripping up in here, right? Okay. <laughs> West Coast, African-American, 3,800 block, Sacktown, <laughs> Del Paso Heights, what is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. So guys, watch this clip with us and react to it with us. Hey, I was born here just like you. Don't come at me like that. Let me just live my life, okay? I'm African. <laughs> Everywhere on this planet where your phenotype exists, indigenous people suffer. Everywhere on this planet where your phenotype has settled, indigenous people want you gone. Everywhere. So you can choose to do something with that information or you can just ignore it and say, you know what, you were born here, that's fine. Now the fact that you were born here should not have happened. You were born here of violence, colonization, Hey guys. Mm-hmm. Wow. What do you think about what this young man is saying? The white guy is saying he's African and he's no one should call him a European. And then the other guy is saying he should not have been born in Africa. What do you think? What part of Africa was he born? South Africa. So like South Africa, right? South yeah, Africa. based on that African. accent. African. Yeah, yeah, definitely South, yeah. South Africa. Then the kid is uh, the kid is a troll. This is my opinion. I'm mm-hmm. obviously speculation I don't know him personally. But I think the kid is a troll. He's a product of apartheid and he should shut his mouth. Okay, man. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> like, what? he's, it's. Say with so, your chest. Yeah. yeah, like, the thing is, right? I'm pretty sure he knows what people that look like us have gone through. Mm. And to go out on his whatever social media platform he's decided to do that clip on mm-hmm. and speak like that and at the end, like it's some sort of joke. Spit. Yeah, I just yeah. can't, I can't really take that seriously. Like, um, He needs to look at himself in the mirror Mm. and uh, really think about what sort of message and what sort of image of himself he's trying to put out there. Mm -hmm. But he's, no. Okay. Before (laughs) before we move on to the rest, do you think that white people born in Africa should consider themselves as Africans? No. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No. Okay. You want to back it up? Do I want to back it up? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need to. Okay. <laughs> it's just a straight no. But um, for for the reasons I said before that, you know, like um, it's just too much trauma behind the way that, <laughs> behind, you know, like mm-hmm. like their existence on this, on this continent for yeah. him to just come out and just be so blasé, mm-hmm. blasé about it. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was born in London. Yeah, but I'm. I don't consider myself uh, European or nor uh, British. Mm-hmm. I don't mean if I was going to say anything, I'd call myself a Londoner because, you know, people from London like me. We have an affiliation. We have. We understand what we've all been through mm-hmm. in London. Whether you're, and it's not just a black experience. It's an Albanian experience. It's an Indian experience, right? It's mm-hmm. an African experience. A Caribbean experience. So when we say, yeah, we're Londoners, when we say we're Londoners, that's what we mean. Like we've been through things here. We've, we've um, had to like hold it down. And the rest, of the rest of the UK don't get that about Londoners. That's why they always, um, when we ever venture out of London, they call us Southern Softies. They say we're this, they say we're that. Cause we don't mess with mm-hmm. anybody outside because all everybody outside of London voted for Brexit. So that tells you, tells you mm. everything you need to know mm. about that. Yeah. So um yeah, yeah, that's 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 all I've got to say on okay. it really. Yeah. 
so far. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I think that that guy was definitely trolling, mm -hmm. right? With the whole hawk spit mm -hmm. at the camera and all that stuff. That's mm -hmm. just a symbol of disrespect. Why would you want to be embraced by somebody who you don't respect? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Why would you want to be included amongst those people while showing them disrespect? Right? I think that's question number one in my mind. Mm. For me, there's a difference between nationality and heritage, mm -hmm. right? Mm. For example, mm. you could be born of a country. You could be born in a country, rather. You could be born in a country and therefore establish citizenship with that country. Mm -hmm. And your nationality, therefore, becomes of that country. You could be of European descent, born in South Africa, and carry a South African passport, therefore your nationality is South African. However, your heritage is not African. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a question of what are you giving more credence to? Is mm -hmm. it your nationality mm -hmm. and your citizenship, your documented citizenship on paper that gives you the right to claim that you're African? Mm -hmm. Or is it the fact that you have a lineage and a bloodline that goes back multiple generations of people that are of this place? that allows you to claim African. Mm -hmm. You think about people in the United States, for example, whose family history is, I'm an immigrant from such and such country, mm -hmm. right? The first nationality or the first identifier is of their country of origin. Mm -hmm. I'm an Indian American. Mm -hmm. I'm an Asian American, mm -hmm. right? I'm a, I'm a Ugandan American. Mm -hmm. I'm a Caribbean American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... People have the right to claim where their familial bloodline, where their heritage comes mm -hmm. from first. Mm -hmm. And I think whatever you attach after that by way of nationality or citizenship is secondary and very much unimportant to me. Okay. That's just it. Okay. Well, Zaid. That's a great point. Zaid. Great point, Gabs. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at me like that, Oshay? <laughs> so I've been sitting here listening to... Um, the great retorts and responses. But I'd like to throw some shit in the game. Yeah. Because that's okay. what I'm good at. Okay. Let's uh, leave his European ancestry aside. Mm -hmm. And I'd like me to put myself in that equation. Let's take X out as a variable and put Y, which is myself. Mm -hmm. What then, when you come here to Uganda and you open up your mouth, what do they say you are? What do they say you are? Me? What do they say? Uh, on average. On average, foreigner and Mzungu. Uh huh. They don't say British. Huh? No one says British. No. If, Mzungu. When they hear me talk, they go, "Oh, you're American." I say, "No." Uh, I'll, I'll just say I was born in London, and they go, "Oh, okay." Mm -hmm. And they leave it as that. And then, like when I go out to rural areas, I've been, yeah, I've been. It's even to, worse. I've been referred to as Mzungu. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Which but is it's also just, but it's interchangeable just, for white or foreign. Mm. Yeah. Is foreign. that so? Yeah. Yeah. Is I that think right? It's, I what think it's more you? to do with my accent. Because you have a an American accent, very similar to mine. Mm -hmm. Who are you here? Um, if they don't know your people, who are you? If they don't know my people, they associate me with being not of this place. They associate me with being American. Okay. For sure. So now we got to get to the point that people look at you and say, he's black, but let us differentiate him from the rest of us. You can even say... I was born here and left. Mm -hmm. And what are people going to say about you then? Mm -hmm. You're not from here. You don't have our experience. Now, if he was to go back to, let's say most South Africans have um, a Dutch ancestry or a British ancestry. Some came from Russia, things like that. Will they say, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to cape for the guy. But if he goes back to the Netherlands tomorrow, what are they going to say about him? Welcome home. No. <laughs> no. They'll say welcome home. <laughs> he can't speak because they didn't say welcome home to us to a certain degree. Why do we have, what is the name of this podcast called? What is the name of it? Repad. Repad. Why do we have this podcast here? We have this podcast because we identify with each other more so than we identify with what goes on here. That's mm -hmm. why this podcast exists. Mm -hmm. That's why we get views. Mm -hmm. That's the, we got to be honest about it. It's the truth. The idea is that white guy, I'm not even dealing with the fact that he, <laughs> at the end, I don't care about that. He was born there, right? It's mm -hmm. not his fault he was born there. Mm -hmm. He was happened to be born there. Just like it's not my fault I was born in California, right? So he says I'm African, meaning that, okay, I understand I'm white, but this is where I was born. I identify here. I don't know the Netherlands. I don't know the Dutch. 
So the thing about it is that if he goes back to Netherlands, they're not going to accept him like he's one of them. They're not. You're white, but you need to do a whole lot of stuff to prove that you're from here, maybe, but you'll never really be one of us. That's the situation. And the reason why we have this podcast is because we know that's the truth for us here, too. We know that. It's something we can't get around. We understand that we black, but we're not going to let nobody else define the fact how you feel about us. That's, what the, that's how we have a, a, our opinion is this. You know, I'm going to push back on you, though. Go ahead. Push I'm going to push back on you, though, because the, the, the stark difference between we who look like the people here but may not necessarily sound like the people here, yes. and that's the one differentiator that allows us to be considered not of this place. We also come here and make great efforts to embrace the culture. Yes, when you embrace the people and you embrace the culture, when you embrace what makes the people truly who they are, mm -hmm. then it makes it easier for people to welcome you in yes. and embrace you as one of their own. Yes. When I came here and I didn't have the ability to speak my mother's language, so to mm -hmm, speak, and mm -hmm. to say <clears throat> my accent was very distinctly American because that's where I grew up and I've been speaking American English for my entire life. Mm -hmm. When I started identifying in and embracing those aspects of, you know, Ankole culture mm -hmm. that defined who my grandmother sees herself as mm -hmm. and who my father grew up seeing himself as. Mm -hmm. When I started embracing those parts of my heritage and, and being comfortable and, and, and proclaiming that I am of that, mm -hmm. then it gives people less of an excuse to tell you that you don't belong. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at somebody who's clearly mm -hmm. looking at things from a perspective of, yeah, I'm still superior to you, though. Mm. I'm still superior to you. I want you to claim me as African, but I still look at myself as superior to Africans. Mm -hmm. I don't see any demonstrated effort. And maybe we need to do a deep dive on this young man's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Maybe he has a Zulu wife. Maybe he has an entirely different connection to the African culture in that country that allows him to legitimize his claim to being an African. Mm. But what I saw in that video... Based off of the demeanor that he showed, he's just seeking entitlement to being called that just because he was born there and grew up there. But I don't see any embracing of the culture. I I'm don't not, see I'm any not, embracing not, of no, the culture. I'm sure what you're saying. And I'm not dealing with that. So I, th I, th I think that's, but that's a, that's, a, that's a definite line that needs to be drawn. Like, it doesn't matter where you live. Mm -hmm. If you go, if you're born there and you grow up there, but you don't embrace the culture of the people whose heritage is of that, then you can't claim that. Well, that's something we can't answer. But what, 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 what I'll say is we can demarcate that line if you would like. Right. Let's demarcate that line yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. So in the case of the guy, and I'm not in the defense of him, because remember, for those in the comments, I have substituted X for Y. Correct. I put ourselves in his place. Yeah. Because this is the Repat podcast, so I want to look at it from our perspective, because clearly... We would understand that he's not African. Yeah. But for those of us who feel that we are, what is the issue that... So look at the work that we need to do. Based off genetics, you're saying that he's white. Mm -hmm. He should go back to Europe. Mm -hmm. But if he was to go back to Europe, he has to do the same things that you just said that we got to do, that you had yeah, to do. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, and that's okay. Okay, so what he's saying then, in the same case, that in South Africa, where his, he feels that because he's born there, even though it's wrong, in his mind, I am more welcome and accepted here than there. Mm -hmm. That's what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for those of us who genetically here, and even for you, even more than me, because you, 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 your family is born here. Yeah. Look at what you had to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but what I'm saying is there are a lot of brothers and sisters. And my point, and I want to make this valiant point, that us in the diaspora are not looked at as much as real Africans. We are Africans who are not authentically people here. And the same case as that white man, if he were to go back to Europe, would have the same issue. And I'm saying it to make the point to bridge the gap, that I believe in the black world, we are just as African as everybody else, as much so as he is there. But if we're going to go ahead and give him that work for that, then when we come here and have to do the same struggles, and we are, we are black mm -hmm. coming back here, but we have the same problems that I would feel that he has there. Because, hey, don't the price go up there for us? And I know it's all foreigners, not just us. But those are the issues that we're facing here. The reason why we have this podcast on this channel and it gets views mm -hmm. is for what that guy is talking about as a white man there. And that's us as variable Y in Africa. 
Mm-hmm. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. We can demarcate that line all day. And that's true. But still, maintained from London, coming from the Caribbean, they don't know him. He still got to do everything else. Dare I say, if the white guy come from South Africa and do the same thing, he will get more love here than he would. If that's the case. Mm-hmm. If y'all want to be real. Mm-hmm. Is it true? Mm-hmm. So he'd get more mm-hmm. love here of than, course, I, than I. Of course. You know that. In some instances, yes. But the thing is, right? You're right about what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Like I'm not deemed like African, you know, like, yes. I've, I've had struggles coming up. Sure. I've had, I've had arguments with my African brothers and sisters. I've, there's been, we've, we've cussed each other out. I've been called slave baby. I've all these different things. Right. In we've Uganda had, or in, in London. London when I was yeah, growing up. London, yeah, right. Yeah. I, if anyone's got more of a chip in their shoulder to use their platform, cause I've got like, across all my social media platforms, it's, I've got a lot of following. So yeah. if I decided to be like this kid and start trolling and and I have m- more than a right to do that, yes. but I haven't. You mm-hmm. know why? Because I want to, I have empathy. Mm-hmm. I have an understanding mm-hmm. of how things work. You know, there's some people I will just wash my hands off and say, listen, you don't want to accept me. It's cool. It's fine. I can't change your mind. You ain't mm-hmm. going to change mine. I move on. But I'm not going to go on social media and start trolling and because I have a respect and an understand, understanding of the situation. This kid comes across arrogant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like he should know the way he looks mm-hmm. and where he lives, what, mm-hmm. that, what that represents, what that stands for. Mm-hmm. Like what, what he's doing is like, I don't know, because it's a couple of years ago, I bet he wouldn't, wouldn't call himself African. But now Amma Piano's popping, mm-hmm. Burner Boy's popping, mm-hmm. uh, Black Coffee's won a Grammy, I believe. Mm-hmm. You know, think, oh, I was, oh yeah, I call I myself see. African now. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool now. No, 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 no. I'm, you know what I mean? So that, that's the feeling I get off him. Look at you with those comebacks. So that's a good time. That was a pretty decent one. Let me grab some water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you been studying with a gamma? <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. Uh, let's see what you we got over I mean. here. Let's see what we got over here with the with the with the off the off the record beautiful ladies over there. Yeah, we do have um two lovely ladies as our audience. Just to back up what Maintain was saying, mm-hmm. uh, for me, I can't. He can't be authentically black. Mm-hmm. You know, he can't pretend mm-hmm. to love the black people. He can be born here. You know, he can maybe have one or two an- ancestors where somewhat black, but he's not going to wake up one day and adapt to the entire heritage or the culture, you know, of a native like me Mm. or even you, a diasporic uh, black, you know. So for him saying that, it's like a dishonor to his ancestors and mine as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, you can easily relate to some of the things that black people around the world like maybe the upbringing, mm. uh, maybe the food. And there are some things you're going to easily embrace too as a black person, despite you not being born in Africa, you know, being b- born in America or wherever. But for a white person, I, I don't care if you've been born in Africa or not. Mm. Like you're not going to adapt to that entire, entire heritage, mm. you know. Mm. And he can easily switch back to being white. Mm -hmm. if it benefits him. Mm -hmm. But as a black person, Mm -hmm. your oil is going to be black. Yeah, that's a great point. Despite where you are. It's a great point. You know, and how do you think of people who come here and, or even there, Mm -hmm. who are like mixed, mixed, Mm half-half, but usually they identify as black, not white. That's true. Yeah, so for me, he can't authentically be black. Mm -hmm. He can pretend, but he He can't. can't My my question is, what do you say about the, the Arabs? Are they African? Gaddafi? The ones in Morocco, North Africa. First, Libya. Uh, first of all, the Arabic countries of Africa don't even consider themselves so African countries. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You s- we saw that with the with the World Cup when Morocco went, they didn't identify as an African country. They went as an Arabic country. Really? Yes. Places like Libya, where they're still selling slaves <laughs> if you're darker is still happening in places like Libya. Mm-hmm. So they don't identify themselves as black or African or anything like that. Why are they not African so, Union then? Yeah, the same, they are in it because it benefits them. Mm-hmm. It makes them look good on paper. Mm-hmm. Same thing when Rachel was saying, like if, it, like if today mm-hmm. it was going down mm-hmm. and it affected the white man, 
and it would be beneficial for them to change, mm-hmm. they would. And mm-hmm. that's what they always do. Mm-hmm. So for somebody like that to come and say, oh, you know, I'm African and everything, you're not. Mm-hmm. Plus, the blood that flows through your veins is not African. You were born from an ancestry that was not African. Mm-hmm. Your ancestors were not African. They just happened to settle here. Mm-hmm. So for me, it actually... The blood thing is so heavy for me yeah. because even in DNA, you are not African. Mm-hmm. You're just by naturalization. <laughs> so, Can I say something to that? I, I agree with what you're saying, but it seems to me, me living in Uganda, there's a bigger rhetorical question. is what defines an African? And from what I understand now living here, it's not just genetics. Mm-hmm. Right. You need to do something to qualify to be African. Mm-hmm. And then if we go ahead on and, and put it into a niche sector, there are certain things you need to do to be Buganda and Kole, mm-hmm. Bachiga, right? Right. Yeah. So now there are certain behaviors and things that you must do every day to be classified into that. My problem is this, and I'm going to go back to one of our best uh, episodes by the think tank himself, right? The smartest man in Africa, Dr. <laughs> uh, Gabs. <laughs> what do African elites think of African Americans. And what I am, what, what I honestly believe, and I, I'm going to push some in the game, the <laughs> things that we do as diasporans do not qualify mm-hmm. as African behavior. That's what I want to talk about, because what qualifies one to be an African? Clearly, genetics is not the only thing. There are certain things you need to do. There are certain behaviors you must have. You must have certain proclivities. So what I'd like to know is, in order to be African, what qualifies you to be an African? Must you eat matoke every day? What? Luombo. <laughs> Luombo. <laughs> must you speak Luganda? There are certain things you got to do. So what I believe is when Africans see people such as myself or you, you don't qualify because there are certain things you don't do every day to qualify for being African. Mm. That's how they look at you. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. But it can't just be genetics because if that was the case, when we get here, it wouldn't be. I won't say it's uh, you got as welcoming, you know. Thank God, but it's not a qualifying factor. So, what qualifies somebody to be an African, and what determines that outside of genetics and DNA and phenotype? That's something we can't solve, and that's the problem we have in the black world. What qualifies you to be an African, and what do you need to do every day? Do you got to have four wives? <laughs> do you got to wear sandals? Can you wear Jordans? What do you got to do? Mm. That's what I want to know. Mm. There's a few points I'd like to raise, if I may. Yeah, please, please, please. So the first point um, I want to make was something similar to this. was an MMA fighter. I don't know if you guys heard about this. So it's an MMA fighter. I'm going to mispronounce his name. Uh, he's from South Africa. His name is Driscus or something like that. Mm-hmm. He was saying, oh, there's three African champions in the, M- in the UFC. I think there's one left now. Two have lost their belts. It was Kamaru Usman. Uh, Francis Ngannou and Israel Adesanya. Mm, mm. So this white South African man uh, based in South Africa mm. says, I am the only one based on the continent. I'm bringing the belt. If I win the belt, I'm bringing it back to Africa. I'm the only one in Africa fighting out of Africa, mm. training in Africa. Because the other guy's in Australia. Yeah, mm. right. So yeah, Israel is uh, born in Lagos, uh, raised in Ooh. New Zealand. He loves white girls. Usman <laughs> <New Zealand. laughs> <laughs> is uh, yeah. raised in America mm-hmm. and Francis in Ghana, Senegal, I believe, mm-hmm. to France. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a big hurrah. Israel just went at him, so on and so forth. Now, this kid in the clip, he may have done a part two and explained himself more, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But this guy shows that like, I've got time for him because when it all <laughs> kicked off, he was like, listen, 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 listen. I know what I look like. I know what I sound like. I know what my heritage is. I weren't saying I was African. I weren't saying I was an African champion. I'm just saying I live here on the continent. I train here on the continent. Oh. And if I win the belt, the belt's coming back to the continent. These other guys can't say that. Mm. Oh, and he, he clarified yeah, it. Yeah, he clarified yeah. it. And it was a good point to make moving forward because now he's probably going to get a championship fight so there's there's ways and means of doing things right mm-hmm. not Great just ah, nah, 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 yeah, and yeah, spit. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know what i'm saying mm-hmm. he's never going to be regarded as african but i can respect if you move correctly uh-huh you know what i mean yes. like like wherever i go i try to i try to move humbly i try to move with some 
form of empathy, like for what's going on mm. where I am, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not just gonna like be disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, why I, that's why I think this, think this, uh, this kid I wanna is. piggyback off of that exact point mm -hmm. to answer your question about what does a person need to do to qualify to be yes. African, mm -hmm. right? To be considered or embraced by Africans to be among us, to be among the group that can be considered a legit African. I think first things first, it comes down to respect. Okay. And when I'm talking about respect, it's there are cultural norms. Mm -hmm. You you refer mm -hmm. to here in Uganda, in Buganda Kingdom, there's a certain respect. Yes. There's a certain vein of respect and mm -hmm. deference mm -hmm. that needs to be applied to how you communicate to your elders, mm -hmm. how you communicate to people of respect mm -hmm. within that community. Okay. Right? In in Western Uganda, in Ankole culture, right? In Bachiga culture there's a same dynamic of respect mm -hmm. that you need to establish that I appreciate that these are the cultural norms of these people who I seek to be embraced by. Mm. And as long as you can demonstrate a respect for that, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you were born into or grew up with mm -hmm. or is native or familiar to you in, in, in deep within your soul. Mm -hmm. But as long as you demonstrate that respect mm -hmm. and you understand that this is something that I need to recognize and appreciate and I need to step into that, step into recognizing that there is a culture here that I'm, I'm different from this culture. Right. Mm -hmm. And I respect and appreciate that though I'm different from this culture, I recognize the validity of what these people value. Mm -hmm. And as long as I can demonstrate that I also am willing to show deference and appreciation to the cultural norms within this this group or this region or mm -hmm. this this nation mm -hmm. that I want to be embraced by, then I improve my likelihood of being welcomed. Mm. But you can't go in there with a raised fist and with a whole bunch of ire and entitlement to say, just because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I go back three generations in this country. Uh -huh your tradition you have to embrace me anyway no you don't no we don't so yeah. you can't you can't claim you can't demand respect if you're not willing to offer respect and deference mm. you need to offer your your respect and deference first mm -hmm. and have it appreciated and have it recognized and then at that point you can be welcomed into culture and society okay this is something that you've answered for me today on this podcast and then it leads on to um, a bigger question that we need to do a, a um, episode on should african americans or the diasporans get citizenship in africa that is because so many people believe that we have a birthright people like myself and maintain yeah. we have a birthright here although we can't trace where we're at and so you hear a lot of people in the diaspora complaining about the fact we deserve citizenship on the continent by birth, by birth, not by efforts. It's our birthright. It's our birthright to be in Africa. Now, Jonita, me and her had a very big debate in 2020 about this. Very classic debate off the record. We won't talk about who was on what side, but, <laughs> but, but after living here, I can understand what you're saying. And a lot of the people in the diaspora that are trying to come back to Ghana or shout out to Sierra Leone who given birth by citizenship. But still, even for yourself who were born here, yes. you have to go through those mechanisms and your dad is a big time person in this country, but even you. So there yeah. I say somebody else like us who we didn't come from here with one generation from that. The thing is, if you want to be accepted and we're telling public diaspora as something that you have to earn. Yes. It's something that you, and that's true. You have to, whatever you did in America, does not matter? And I want to tie it back to the people there in the episode because it's more about them than this white person. But you, there are certain things that you need to do. Mm. And I think that's a great point, respecting certain things. If you're a woman, there's a certain way you act. You might get away with stuff in the UK, just like people here. And, and like I see people, you know, sometimes on the street, they pee, what? you know, the border guys. <laughs> this is something you, you, you can't do in America, you, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Driving the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with what everyone is saying. I feel like all of you have said, I've given very beautiful points about being respectable and whatnot. I also feel like, like you said, it's now becoming a trend to want to be African. I'm, no, you said I, made, it. I got it from you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I may get cancelled for this, but there are some people in the diaspora who didn't want to claim to be African till it became fancy. 
to be African. Mm. And now yeah. they, they identify as African. But before they're just like, no, I'm American. I'm a citizen. I was born here and whatnot. But now True. that it's trendy and whatnot, now they I want to. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Okay. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll wholeheartedly. Ooh. But go ahead. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But, wholeheartedly okay and i'm gonna tell you as african-american uh -huh. one of the reasons why nelson mandela got out of prison mm -hmm. was because when nelson mandela got out of prison in the early 90s you could see new york city shaking because i would say dare i say the strongest pan-africans are in the african-american community in my opinion so i don't know where you got that from that, I, no. I do not disagree with what you're saying. I'm just saying that some people... No, they're there. We know. We have friends who have gone to the diaspora and then all of a sudden now they're British. Mm -hmm. they, they, don't, they don't identify as Ugandan. Like she gives up the whole thing, even drops her local name. You understand? It does exist. You're saying that people in the diaspora are now wonder because Africa is getting so popular. I think some people. I yes. doubt that. I don't think that. I mean, that might be what I mean with some of the Afrobeat stuff. Yeah. And I think that's what is it being more cool. But listen, I mean, Afrobeat is huge in Africa. It's trending in the world. It's not as big as hip hop. I think that the people that were always black remember, we had teachers in our community from day one, John Henry Clarks. Amos Wilson's in the 80s and the 90s. Dr. Claude Anderson in the 90s. So we know who we've been. We had HBCUs, right? We was always on. In fact, if you want to look about at, who's the founder of Pan-Africanism in Africa, you would say Kwame Nkrumah. Where did he learn it from? It was in America. So if I would say people are more or less getting on the hype, yeah, his training and things like that, and, and it's great. But I don't really think that as big as what you're saying it is. Because a lot of brothers and sisters in America love Africans. Mm -hmm. It's like in London. Mm -hmm. Maintaining here because yeah. he just saw a video. <laughs> Our people taught us who we were. Yeah. We had people knocking on the door selling encyclopedias about Africa when we was kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same. It's the truth. Yeah, so I, like we been knew this. Yeah, we yeah. ain't we ain't, you know. I don't dispute what you're saying, but there's definitely a certain percentage. No. It's small, I think. No, I, but I, it's I agree the, with both of you because I've I've come across both, both. instances. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. I've come across both instances. Like yeah. guys I've been to school with, just there chatting, rah, rah, rah. Be, oh rah, you're Caribbean, rah. I thought he's Nigerian, bruv. Mm -hmm. What? You know what I mean? That like, there has been that. No, that 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 yeah. that might be that yeah. was maybe the younger. I don't know yeah. about the younger people yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could it, be it, that. It's happening. But yeah. it's always like if you think about uh, 125th and Lennox, um, oh, you know, that's less. in Harlem. Mm. You think about Black Philadelphia, the African market. You think about Lemur Park in L.A. Hello, you're thinking about D.C., Baltimore. Howard University, these are hubs of Africa inside of America that's been there for years. Caribbean influences, mm. African influences. This is who we are. Yeah. yeah. This is who we've been. Yeah. And you, like you know like I, mean? I said, not to dispute what you're saying, <laughs> but there's a percentage. Yeah, you're get I this said that what I'm saying today. because I personally know some people who tell him, are bro, doing you better that. Tell him, he went to <laughs> Tell him what's going on, bro. But no, yeah. I, I'm so I'm gonna say it like this. Uh -huh. There's the there's the the pan African intellectual that has been there mm. for time immemorial, for decades. Yeah. That is a well-established part of the black American culture, mm -hmm. right? Everybody that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. People that have been at it for decades. However, to Joan's point, in this millennial generation, yeah. mm -hmm. where things are only cool as they seem to be when you can consume it through your phone or through social media, right? Or through what's popular in pop culture, I can absolutely identify with the, the new wave of millennial, not even just African-Americans. Yeah. I'm talking about millennial blacks all over the world yeah. who are very happy now to claim that Africa is popping, mm. Africa is cool, just because of the wave of popularity that African music and African culture right. has boomed to establish over this, let's say, the last half decade. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you can't deny that. I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the substantial, powerful pan-Africanist movement has been shifted by by this trend in any way. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's been long established. Mm -hmm. That's grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. But what we can also very clearly say is that three years ago, mm -hmm. you weren't going to see. Burn a boy at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. You no, weren't no, going no, to no. say Wizkid, I, but that's a measure. That's yes. that's a very distinct and definite measure of how African culture has been embraced in a way that it hasn't been before. And that's before, a fact. Yeah. But, but I you was, can't uh, deny but that. But I was saying that those that. seeds always was planted. That's my whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm so of happy course. that Afro yeah. beats is getting popping. I saw um Iyanya and two. I didn't even know who the guy was. 2018, I saw Iyanya perform in Warsaw, Poland. I was like, 
and I got to meet the guy. Yeah. But what I will say is this. In the States, and we got to give it to us, us older people, you know what I mean? We have been influencing, especially in black cities, Baltimore, D.C., Atlanta, yeah. Yeah. Philly, New York, Oakland, L.A. You, Those are some of the strongest black cultural cities in the world. Stronger than here in many places about how you think with a black mind. I will say that while this is good, but those seeds have always been planted. Those kids are seeing that, okay, what I've been hearing, I'm now seeing a success. Mm-hmm. What well, While that's due working, but we cannot, I don't want to take away the work of those who came before us in right. Black London. Yeah. Those who came before us yeah. in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Because they laid out the framework for all of us. And so that's why the kids responded because the framework has already been laid down. That's why Claude Anderson in the 90s is still selling books to this day. I put his Amazon book up, uh, Poweronomics. Yeah. Everybody in the comment, the, 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 the com- it got like 3,000 comments on my oh, community tab. I bought this. I bought this. I bought this. I already had this already. So that knowledge has always been there. I'm not disputing yeah. what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But we cannot lay the groundwork of what the elders did. And so many times we, we forget what the elders did. We can't do that. Like it's just Afrobeat did it. No. Our elders did it. In Africa they did it. Kwame Nkrumah did it. The blacks in London did it. Dr. Carter G. Wilson did it. But it wasn't fly. It wasn't fly. It wasn't fashionable. Yes, it was. It wasn't swag. James Brown, I'm black and I'm proud. All of that, it led, it led into everything. Public yeah, enemy. But, but what I'm saying is... Common. Uh, no, yeah. what I'm saying no, is, you're, yes. You're right, O'Shea. You're it, right. It, it, it was, but it's not, but it it's wasn't not embraced. as widely proliferated yeah. as it is yeah, now. Yeah. Like there's, there's, Well, with Africa, no. Africa, Africa's having its time now. Yeah. Yeah. But those same seeds are the same as what you saw before. Yeah. But it's it's different. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's, a, it's a time now. Yeah, it's a different iteration of it. Yeah, yeah. it's a different iteration. Yeah, yeah. And because of the advent of social media, yes, and because of the advent of being able to click once and everything is broadcast throughout the world, yes, in a very viral viral manner, it gives the impression that things have a much more global impact. Yeah. Yes, in a faster and more pronounced way yes but i agree with you mm. we cannot both, let both, our elders both, did the both work. things can they be did. true they did. both yeah. things can be true both statements can be true that the elders absolutely laid the groundwork but you can also say that because of the nature of media and how things are moving now and how information travels as quickly as it does and how people are also keen to latch onto things that they don't necessarily understand, but they just look at it and no, embrace no, it that, as cool that's a great point right yeah. there people understood and they studied to understand the messaging behind say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Mm-hmm. Right. They took time to learn and educate themselves and become scholars of that word. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have to be educated about it. You just have to know that that sounds good to me. It <laughs> looks good to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to celebrate it. Mm-hmm. And then there's a ripple effect that spills over and it makes it seem as though it's a more monumental movement mm-hmm. that kind of downplays the impact of the, of the, the let's call it the, the previous generations. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I think both statements can be true. Yeah. There is substantial value to be made from reflecting upon the struggle and the fight right. that the four the forefathers and the previous generations put in to cement this foundation. Right. And it's the springboard, it's the stepping stone upon which young people are now able to say, listen, I'm black, I'm proud, I'm African, I'm fly. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very distinctly who I am in my national heritage, but yes. you can embrace it across the world just because this shit is dope now. Mm. Right. It's fly now. Yeah. That's, it's that's sexy great, now. That's why you get paid all the You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why you get paid. You maintain. Y'all but yeah, paid. but... <laughs> what works is what's happening now. Mm-hmm. Conversation. Mm. Right? Ugandans, Caribbean, African-American, right? These conversations is what... Helps, And I say that to say this because when I employed a nanny for my son, Mm. right, and she heard my accent on the Zoom interview, came, was expecting full, like, Muzunguism. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Muzunguism. Right? That's what she was expecting because of the way I sounded. Not because of the way I looked, the way I sounded. When I started, because I love cooking, right? Mm -hmm. When I started making my curry goat and my jerk chicken and... And she and my rice and peas and all these different things. She was just looking at me like, this is not what I expected. I was expecting He has some spice. Burgers and <laughs> cheese and Frankfurt's hot Shepherd dogs. Spy. Yeah. <laughs> Shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie. And all these things. And she and after like a month of working to, together for the benefit of, of my beautiful son, she she broke it down. She said, I was expecting Mazungu food. Like I was it da, 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 da. and she was because of our interaction and my my heritage through my cooking. 
it's broken down so many misconceptions for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And whereas before she would probably speak to her friends, I've got this new job, I'm working for this Muzungu. Da, da, da. She doesn't say that now. And when I've heard her on the phone correct people when they say, Oh, you're with the Muzungu. She's like, ah, ah, this guy, Psh, no, 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 no. I believe it takes, this is what it's going to take. You know what I mean? Like for anybody that wants to come to Uganda or any area in Africa, don't just be in your space because it's easy to get caught up in the expat space. Mm. I see it all the time with um, people where I live in Luboa. You have two private schools. Mm. So everybody lives there so they can get their kids to school without mm. the worry of the jam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they just stay in Luboa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They go to Caramel, they go to Quality, they, they, the new restaurant may open up off the Entebbe Road and just they just stay there. That's not helping anything. You've got to get out, you've got to mingle and show there's more similarities than differences. Uh, okay, on that point that Maintain has made, because there's people I know who have moved to Kenya mm -hmm. and they've stayed in Kenya for so long to the point that they have become Kenyans because of accepting the culture mm -hmm. and understanding I'm not where I used to be. I'm in a new place. To the point even like we, I have a white friend, we call him Joro because he's so Kenyan to the point like you can't, de his demeanor and he, he's totally, he's totally incorporated. Mm -hmm. So most of the things that he does are Kenyan in a way, but that doesn't make him totally, it doesn't make him Kenyan. Mm -hmm. So he's just accepted the culture like, um, Agabo. yeah, he was saying, <laughs> so yes, so. <laughs> Such a learn <laughs> how to. Uh. What do I do? So yeah. does he really does he relate as Kenyan? Does he say I'm Kenyan? No, he doesn't say he's Kenyan. Right, okay. He is British, uh -huh. but he, he's what we call in so Kenya long. Tabia, his his character uh, and has become Kenyan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. Mm. Okay. By the way, shout out to the one white Ugandan that I know, How's who's that? a true brother, the homie Maxi Kizito. Is it the guy who's? <laughs> <laughs> The one white Ugandan that I know, I, I like that dude, man. That he's, dude is funny. He's the homie, man. Wait, the you guy, like him. And, and you like he, him. He loves Ugandan <laughs> culture, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, he yeah, loves yeah, Ugandan culture. Is the guy who was yeah. dating the radio presenter? Sure, sure. She was I'm, 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 bleep, bleep. I'm not going to talk about that, but uh, shout out to Maxi Kizito. Where, where's, where's he from originally? I, I f with him the long way, man. Where's he, where's he from originally? Um, I think he's originally Belgian, I want to say. Yeah, his family has life. He's hilarious on the interviews. Yeah, his family got some big. 30 acre farm in Entebbe and but he is to hilarious and all that stuff. though like, I love that dude funny. Man. like I've seen his man. interviews he's he be cracking me up like he's <laughs> yeah. yeah he's funny yeah yeah we hear people saying oh just because you're born in America that doesn't make you an American because you're black mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can you explain to us who are Africans who would like to understand that like if someone makes that statement what do they mean by that or do you relate to that statement like that you're not American yeah because, because you're, you're black yes okay I'll say this. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, the statement, you're not American, can be sent at you from both directions. Mm -hmm. mm. And I'll say, I'll say it, and let me break it down for you further. So I am Ugandan by heritage. Every drop of blood that flows through my veins is Ugandan, 100%. But I was born in the United States. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, there would be moments where I would demonstrate behaviors that ran counter to the culture that my parents represented mm -hmm. and found dear to them. And they would remind me, you're not an American kid. You're a Ugandan who happened to have been born in America, mm -hmm. right? That's why they didn't give me a Christian name. That's why they called me Agaba Tumsime, yeah. because they wanted me to identify with the Ugandan heritage that flows through my veins every single day of my life. They didn't want me to get lost and trapped in the identity of being an American and mm -hmm. separate myself from those core values mm -hmm. that they were raised with. But similarly, you could look at it from the other side and say, okay, you're a Gawa Tumsime, you're first generation. You were born in the U.S., but you're not an American because your family doesn't share any of the struggle that the previous three, four generations of African Americans have. Mm. I was looked at as non-American by black American kids because, you know, my parents didn't g grow up in the shadows of, you know, systemic racism and slavery and Jim Crow and Reconstruction and all that stuff. I don't have that in my family's history. And so, mm -hmm. therefore, they could look at me as less than mm -hmm. American. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, 
who cares about a label? It's what do you identify yourself as, mm -hmm. right? And what do you legitimately have the right to say that I'm, I'm on the right side of this argument? You could go back again to that, that MMA fighter mm. who talked about, I live on the continent. I train on the continent. I'm not saying that I can claim African heritage more profoundly than these other guys. Mm. I'm just saying I live here. Yeah. And the empirical evidence states that when I win the belt and I bring it back here and it resides here and I train here, that gives me some credence and credibility to say what I'm saying. And so when you look at yourself in the mirror and you claim African, you claim American, you claim whatever nationality is that you want to, can you legitimately say that? And can you say that without people being able to turn a pointing finger at you and question you and knock down uh, whatever it is that makes you identify yourself? There, you can poke holes in anybody's argument. You can poke holes in anybody's identity. But what I'm saying is just be authentic, be yourself. And all of these conversations around who I am, what I identify as, I mean, you know, we're in a culture where you can wake up one day and identify as not the gender that you were born as. So it's, uh. it's, it's up to the individual to choose what they want to be. Yeah. yeah. And however authentically you can become that person or represent that, and the community that you want to be a part of can embrace you, mm. more power to you. But if they reject you, then that's a struggle that you got to face on your own. <laughs> let, me, let me just say oh, this real quickly. That's a great point. You know, America historically is black or white. Mm -hmm. and if you look at the entertainment from the time of, you know, Chuck Berry before then, um, James Brown, America was always using blacks as an entertainment, you know, Sidney Portier, people like that. So now when people like, Let's say um, in Sydney, 48. So an in, in African American could have included Haitians or Caribbeans. That's how diverse the community was. Sydney, 48 is a um, Caribbean, but looked at solely as pretty much African American. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we would at that time consider. It's a little bit different now, but somebody like Notorious Big, half Jamaican, half Caribbean, Jay Z, those guys are in the, in, in the community too because they lived amongst us. But now, somebody like Agaba, who, again, cared, if you didn't experience those things, mm -hmm. then now we open the door for you. Why are you here? That's the conversation. Uh, but for somebody like me, white people going to always tell you, like, why are you here? We know how I got there, but they're going to say that, right? So which is the reason why I'm here? And if you know, remember Jay, Jay was here, SBK. He's like, you know, I'm not really, um, he wasn't really so happy with his time and the first time coming to Uganda, but he said, I would rather be there than to be in America. Because at least in Uganda, I feel like I got a chance to be a man. And that's the one thing I will say is, um, yeah, in America, although you're born there, my mom was born there, my dad was born there, my grandparents were born there. You know, when I'm here, I feel like I'm actually somebody. Yeah. When I'm in America, no matter how much money I make, I wouldn't feel like I'm somebody. So I think even as an American, if you're not necessarily, and this is with the Latinos. Remember John Leguizamo? He came out and said, we built this country. This is the big thing. That, now, the Latino community is trying <laughs> to get props. That's been a big issue the last few days. But Latinos are blacks, especially us as African and black and Americans. We were the number one minority group and they get nothing. Now, black number two. You're not going to be, the standard of beauty is still somebody that's white. The president is usually always white, besides Barack Obama. So there, you know that you're not really accepted. You know that inherently. Your parents teach you this. Do you know what your parents teach you? You are black. As African American. This is a, you're an American. No. You're still black. I'm going to tell you this for you in the show. The Ukraine and Polish war was going on. Still going on. But it was bad. I was on the border. My city was on the, like two hours away from the Ukraine border. So my mom said, I said, mom, I need to go back to Poland and get some things. So you need to go back to Africa. And my mom is not the biggest fan of Africa. I'm just going to let you know that right now, right? I said, Mama, if anything happens to me, I could just go to Warsaw to the United States airport and go back to America. She said, you could always remember you're black. In other words, what she told me is, forget that you have a bachelor's of science in biology. You have a medical degree. You make in the top 5% of income in America. But as long as you got this black skin, you can't rely on that as an American citizen. You need to know who you are. And that never stopped. And it always remembered that like conversation last year. So those of us that come even maintain, you might be born there, but you know you're not them. They don't look at you like that, which is okay. That's why we are here. That's why we're here. That's why God is here. Because <laughs> we know over there, no matter how much you make, you ain't got no power to say what you want to say. Yeah. Because like that, they can take everything from you.
I can't get canceled in Uganda like I can in America, can I? Nope. You can't. You don't have no power there, even though you got money. Here you got power if you can get it. Yeah. So. Uh, um, that's well said. I feel like that's the perfect. In coming oh. in the episode, you that's well said. <laughs> you ready? No, but no, no. <laughs> but I, I like like it's a it's a good way to close the episode that way because like then you're just dropping some nice words and advice and whatnot. But yeah, guys, tell the people where they can find you. Maintain, I'll start with yes, you. Yes, uh, find me, um, DJ Maintain on all social mediums. That's mixes, general stuff I get up to, <laughs> and production. Okay, Gab. Follow me at Master Gabs on all social platforms: Instagram, Twitter, um, and check me out on the Allergic to Average podcast as well. An amazing a, podcast at A two A underscore podcast. And I thank you guys for the support. I appreciate yeah. you. O'Shea Duke Jackson. Uh, at O'Shea Duke on Instagram. Yeah, and if you have anything you'd like to share with us, email us at teamkenganda at gmail Follow us on all our social media platforms at Kenganda Nation. If you are looking for looks or inner beauty. Head over to the Pan-African Dating Show. We'll see you guys next time. Brilliant segue. <laughs> <laughs>